Hi and welcome to the 2018 Ericsson OSSBSS user group. I'm Des Blanchfield and we're here in New York and I have the pleasure of being joined on camera by Vicky Longer. Hi Vicky, how are you? Good morning. Now Vicky, you're the uh, VP for uh, product within Verizon. For folk who may not know you as well as they should do, could you perhaps just quickly introduce yourself and your role? Sure, I lead the product management organization that delivers our network products to customers, which is all of the connectivity business. I also have the uh, security, managed security services business, as well as our virtualized services and managed network services. And then anything we do at the edge for customers, whether it's hardware, software, and edge services. OSS, BSS user group, I mean, it's a massive topic to cover. We could talk all day on it. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe just share some of the highlights that folk can expect from the next couple of days here in New York and uh, any key takeaways you'd like them to, uh, to take home with them. Yeah, I think, you know, this is all about partnerships and how partnerships uh, can help deliver value to the end user customers that ultimately all of us serve in our respective industries. And I think some of the takeaways are about how partnerships can help us deliver value on top of networks and on top of some of our core competencies. And those partnerships are really going to be necessary to, to meet customer demands to right. get solutions to market really quickly. And if we wait to do it all of our all by ourselves, we won't deliver those solutions as fast as the market demands. There's a phrase that gets, uh, I hear it at many events, you know, co-creation, collaboration and so forth, and you've certainly been doing that yourselves within Verizon and, and your relationship with Ericsson. Um, I would love to get some insight from you because you're literally at the bleeding edge of the space um, around some of the key points of differentiation that you bring to the market in, you know, in comparison to some of the competitors you might have, for example. Well, you know, some of those points of differentiation are really because of the work we've done with Ericsson. So, for example, an SD-WAN solution in and of itself may be a solution that sits on top of networks. We call that an overlay. But uh, an SD-WAN solution for a customer in and of itself won't actually deliver value. We sort of call that like swimming without a lifeguard. Right, so we, I like that. We think it's important that uh, in order for a customer to have a full end-to-end -end, uh, experience that delivers the performance their applications desire, we have to actually be able to orchestrate right. an SD-WAN, um, which means we have to be able to connect it to a network successfully, mm -hmm. and we have to be able to connect it to a deployment model. That might be hardware that sits at the customer edge. It might right. actually be a cloud. And you can't do that with closed-loop service assurance mm. unless you have partnerships and you have these capabilities automated and built and that required a lot of co-development with Ericsson in particular right um, and then Ericsson also to do co-development with our own OSS mm. and BSS partners for uh, systems and tools that weren't necessarily ours to begin with but it's that end-to-end -end package that's necessary right. to connect the overlay networks like SD-WANs to the underlay networks like our wireless network and our wireline network to deliver the full application experience. One of the things that struck me from listening to some of the material this morning, particularly one of the early keynotes, was this whole challenge of digital disruption that's being driven both by competitors and the consumers. You know, end users are asking for more and more. And the other side of the coin was the, the I guess, the digital transformation challenge that a lot of the operators and carriers are being faced with. Um, that's, this must be an interesting challenge for you within Verizon, uh, particularly with what you're doing with Ericsson, to juggle the demand that consumers in the market, whether they're uh, you know, B2C or B2B, and, and your own organization is, is, is going through. Are there any sort of highlights you could share around what that journey's been like going from, I guess, you know, sort of the, the long-term sunk costs that normally would go into being a carrier in the 2 and 3G generation and 4G generation to kind of what 5G makes possible now? Well, 5G really uh, helps us abstract, at least on the enterprise side, that uh, the challenge we've had at the last mile, you know, right. to where we have right. to have, we're dependent on physical networks. And so having additional wireless capabilities, and initially, you know, some of that's going to be a fixed mm -hmm. wireline solution, but, the, but 5G helps us unlock the potential at the edge right. and the edge for industry. And I think that will help us really uh, accelerate industry 4.0 and the potential that we have with that space and delivering new solutions and enterprises for IoT in particular. So I'm pretty okay. excited about it uh, as a product manager on the business side because I think it really brings uh, wireless solutions to the forefront with business customers versus where most of the attention in the past has been around consumer. 
Yeah, yeah, and, and in fact, the latest news around the uh, the uh, deployment of fixed wireless access excited me because that seems to be the killer app for me. And that is, a, it's a it's a component that even though it's on a wireless network, it stays in the same place. You can manage it around the network. It's not some random thing that's just creating load in un unknown places. And it fits everything from consumer to small to medium sized prosumer and enterprise, I guess. Um, is that is, is it like the killer app in many ways, the fixed wireless access space to kind of get something out into that 5G space before you have to completely transform the whole business? Yeah, I think it helps us get that out there faster, right? Yeah. So it accelerates the potential to deliver services to customers. I think it's also going to change how we think about the cloud because mobile edge computing is going to push the cloud much yeah, closer yeah. to the, the user. Um, and that really is how we will deliver the low latency and, and new solution sets that are going to be required to uh, realize some of the use cases that are possible with 5G and designing those 5G use cases around certain slices of the network. And that's why partnerships with Ericsson for us are very important too because Ericsson is our partner uh, not only in the 5G space but in what we do with SDN with orchestration. Right, right. So I think it's this is the critical intersection of, of those two things that in the past had sort of been disparate. Exciting. Well, thank you so much for making time to catch up with me on Great. camera. It's been an absolute pleasure to get to know uh, you and uh, your role and, and what's happening with the relationship between Verizon and Ericsson. And I uh, look forward to a couple of exciting days with uh, some of the keynotes that uh, yourself and your team are providing and uh, some of the material that we'll be seeing online. So thank you again. Really appreciate your time. And folks, we'll wrap up with that. You just heard from Vicky Lonker from uh, Verizon, who was uh, uh, hosting the event here this week and uh, with their partner Ericsson. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for joining us.